The camel herding Gabra nomads live and move in northern Kenya's most arid environment, the desolate, rugged, lava rock strewn terrain of the Dida Galgalu and Chalbi deserts. Life exists in a delicate balance with the environment. Houses in their small villages, always aligned north to south, are flanked on the east by large acacia fenced camel crawls and on the west by smaller enclosures for sheep and goats. The enclosures are gender related. Smaller animals are herded, milked, and cared for by women and girls, while the camel crawl is the domain of men, old and young. During much of the year, fierce northeast winds sweep across the vast plains, strongly affecting village architecture. Entrances always face west, away from the wind, toward Mount Hulal. And the east wall is reinforced physically and spiritually. The curved surfaces of house profiles offer minimal resistance to the wind. Interior space is divided into four parts. Men usually sit on the north, while women sit near the hearth on the south. The hidden east half of the house is separated from the more public west half by a pair of woven screens draped with cloth. The nomads say, a man without a wife is a man without a house. Houses and their furnishings are always created and owned by women, but wooden camel bells and containers, stools and sticks are carved by men. A new house is created in the course of a marriage ceremony. Wedding preparations and family moves are women's work. Once a favorable lunar date is agreed upon, the bridegroom's family will move to the bride's village. The marriage ceremony, full of emotion, permeates the house parts with cultural meaning. Recomposed and rearranged, these same parts become the transportation system.
The balanced loading of each camel reflects the order of space in the house itself. House poles have been tied crosswise into saddle struts, and bent house frames become the arching masts of a desert ship. Rolls of roof and bed mats are wedged in on each side and interior screens are bent over to create the palanquin. The heavy, tightly woven water baskets, essential to life in the desert, are securely fastened, one on each side of a third camel. The mother, the father, and the bridegroom will be accompanied by their close relatives on the long trek to the bride's village. Shortly after the appearance of the new moon, the bridegroom's family and their three camels arrive at the bride's village. The site where the arriving family should locate its houses and camels is pointed out by the bride's father. Preparations for completing the bride's dowry are well underway now. Men do not normally help with the loading or unloading of camels, but this is a special occasion. Included in the dowry is a miniature domed framework which always sits at the center of the back wall inside the house. It is used by women for cleansing themselves and their clothing.
The bent wood frames are lashed together with thongs in a four-sided pattern which recalls the plan and the shape of the house itself. As soon as the camels are unloaded, the bridegroom's mother can begin to fix her place in space. Animal enclosures, made with branches of the acacia tree, must be ready by dusk. While Joseph, the bridegroom, secures the fencing for the camel crawl, his mother has reassembled the framework of her house. Meanwhile, dowry preparations continue. New mats will be needed to complete the required number for the marriage house, and the coiled milking basket, decorated with cowries, must be ready. Used by men for milking the camels, it is an essential part of daily life and ceremony. The camels return at dusk to the shelter of their crawls, and the village begins to settle into the quiet of the night. <laughs> the marriage ceremony begins on the morning of the third day after the full moon. Women from the village bring camel's milk to the mother of Joseph, the bridegroom. The sheep's oil will make their hair and skin shiny black and beautiful. Meanwhile, a camel is prepared for the first formal procession, which will carry the bride wealth to the bride's family.
The basket frames, balanced on the camel's back, are filled with gifts of milk, in baskets woven especially for it. The camel is led by two women with branches in hand into the camel crawl, where it joins the other parts of the bride wealth. Two young camels, a sheep, and two cloths, carried by two village elders, who bless the bride wealth with their ritual sticks. The family group then leaves the crawl and proceeds to the camel crawl of the bride's father. Joseph and his father remain behind. Greetings are exchanged at the entrance, and the blessings are repeated. <laughs> Members of both families move through the crawl together and continue in the direction of the bride's mother's house, while the two young camels are separately secured in the crawl. The milk is carried into the house, and the white cloth and the branches of the sacred Madeira tree are laid above the entrance. The procession is followed, towards noon, by the sacrifice of a black and white sheep at the entrance to the bride's mother's house. A black and white sheep. Black is the strongest and smoothest color. Black makes surfaces shiny. Black camels are the strongest. White is the color of fertility. White is the color of abundance. White camels give more milk. <laughs> Milk, water, and blood are life-giving liquids, white, black, and red. Throughout the morning, Woto, the bride, has been away, herding the family's sheep and goats, as usual. The thong bracelets, 
cut from the forelegs of the sacrificed sheep, establish new family ties and reinforce the sense of belonging. The first one is for the father of Watto, the bride. The second one for her mother. Others will be for Joseph's parents and the elders. The fierce noonday sun marks the end of the morning ceremony. Leaning on their herding sticks, the men relax, but some women continue preparing for the new house. Plaited rope and leather thongs hold everything together. Houses and saddles, baskets and their slings, camel bells and camel legs are joined together by pulling, hanging, knotting and tying. Rope links the built environment to the natural environment. New house frames are bent into shape by tying them to a tree. Cow hides, which will line the new house, are patched to perfection, and tanned hides are coated with a fat dye to make them glisten. <laughs> to keep them pliable, ropes are rubbed with oil. <laughs> The four-sided leather slings, decorated with cowries, in which Joseph and Watto will carry their marriage milk baskets, will later be hung inside on the east wall of the house. Across the way, a friend helps with Joseph's marriage preparations. As the afternoon wears on, men gather at Watto's mother's house to share a ritual meal. Meat from the sacrificed sheep and buna, made from coffee beans, sheep's fat, and camel's milk. Oh, 
By now, Joseph has been transformed into a different person by the symbols of his new role in life. A shaven head, white turban and toga, and an inherited whip, a newly carved herding stick, and his marriage milk basket. A prayer at Watto's mother's house closes the ritual meal and opens the next major phase of the marriage ceremony, the creation of a new house. Joseph and several friends have left the village to make an offering to a sacred acacia tree before cutting some of its branches, because trees have a life of their own. Joseph and Watto are still separated. They may not speak to each other until after the marriage ceremony. The prayer has ended and the dismantling of Watto's mother's house by her woman friends and relatives begins. One woman cannot participate. Watto's mother. She has no say in how the parts of her house and its furnishings will be divided up. Part of the components of Watto's mother's house will be combined with new elements to create Watto's house. Watto's mother immediately reassembles what remains into a smaller house for herself. In Watto's father's crawl, the new house quickly takes shape. Joseph and his friends, entering his family's crawl, use the branches they cut to mark out a circle. Watto's house is barely finished before it is quickly taken down. With this architectural gesture, 
the ties with her own family are cut. Reversing the direction of the morning's procession route, the new house components are carried into Joseph's father's crawl and placed over the circle of branches laid down by Joseph and his friends. This symbolic foundation is blessed by Joseph's mother, his father, Watto's mother, her father, and finally by Joseph himself. As soon as the new fire sticks are cut, an old shoe, given by Joseph's mother, is used to light a fire in. For this new fire, elephant dung kindling must be used. The new house is almost finished as night falls. The house remains empty while Joseph and his friends anxiously await Watto's arrival. Across the way, the women are also waiting for Watto. Just before dawn, completely veiled and hidden from view, Watto is ushered into the crawl by her young woman friends. A bowl of milk has been set on the threshold of the new house. Watto will not leave the house, nor will Joseph leave the crawl. Each watched over by a best friend, they will not speak to each other for two more days. The village pace is leisurely, quiet and relaxed. The long, intense night of activity has drained its energy. Come on, come on, come on. 
Hey, don't work it like a guitar. I'll get to work it. I'll work it. Daily chores must be done. The wood of the chachani tree is used for making charcoal. It fumigates the basket, giving off a resin that reseals it tightly. The milk baskets and water containers which the women make involve a long, laborious process, collecting and processing the roots of the wild asparagus for the cores and coils requires many weeks and much effort. Working with only a simple awl, a milk basket may take three months to finish, a water basket more than two years. The Gabra say, sitting is resting, standing is work. On the morning of the fourth day, the formal wedding ends inside the house with a ceremony among Joseph, his best friend, Woto, who is still hidden by a cloth, and her best friend. After sharing tobacco, the two men pour a mixture of milk, fat, and coffee beans over each other's hands, four times. Yes. 
Sini betul. Kali aku lihat. The ceremony is over as Watto and her friend have also washed their hands four times. Oh, I'm your buddy. Oh, the silence is broken. Now Joseph and Watto can speak to each other. But the marriage ceremony is not over. During the weeks which follow, the new house will be ritually rebuilt in three other locations inside the crawl. Only after the next moon will it be moved outside the crawl to its proper place in Joseph's village. Each ritual rebuilding also entails a token move. The first move is unique and meaningful for Watto, who will sit inside the palanquin of the lead camel. It also involves a baby boy of one of the neighbors, symbolizing the fervent Gabra desire for a fruitful marriage and many sons. The ride outside the crawl is just a short one. The house is immediately rebuilt in another quadrant of the crawl, a few yards away. The key arch, the backbone of every house, is put up first. Two crossbeams, rigidly secured with continuous lengths of rope, tie the key arch to the entrance poles opposite. Then, lighter arches are tied inside and outside to the square frame. 
First on the right, then on the left. The bed frame is anchored to the ground with stones, and cowskin wall linings are hung inside, along the back wall. The mats are laid up in a clockwise direction over the lower colorful cloth hangings. And finally, the divider screens are moved in. House and marriage ceremony are synonymous in the Gabra language, expressing and reflecting the essence of their belief system, Nagaya, peace, balance, harmony, the proper order of things among people and the environment.